Hello and welcome to Chains of Change, uh, episode 3. This is the place where we all share our ideas on how we can make our little small contributions each to make an overall large effect. Today, in this video, I'd like to talk about food. Uh, it's a big subject, so all I'm going to talk about is the ideas that I'm going to, to try and have tried over the years to produce a small amount of, of sort of good nutritious food. The thing being if that we all supply a small amount each, overall it becomes quite a large amount that's not imported from abroad or sprayed with chemicals or has the, farmy, the, the factory farming involved in it. Um, now one of the statistics that really made a difference um, to my understanding of where our food comes from is that between 75 and 80 percent of all farms uh, in the world are run by families. So they're peasant farms, small farms, family run farms with a few people on. The exception is that there's about 15 percent which are factory farms on enormous scales and they provide quite a large percentage of the bulk foods. Um, so the bulk foods are, are really a problem we can't grow a lot of our own bulk foods. We can grow potatoes um, and various other things in this country which are very simple to grow. So we're going to explore those. Um, fruits. Uh, we can grow a lot of fruits in this country. and The ones that we can, we shouldn't really be importing them from abroad. So the first on the list, um, trees, fruit trees. Now these are available all over the place, they're available um, online. Now, I've included nuts in this category as well, so it's fruit and nuts basically. Um, there's several different ways of getting them. You can get bare-rooted um, saplings from the internet and I have um, sweet chestnuts that I've planted this way. I've grown walnut trees from walnuts. Um, I've got hazels which I've grown from the hazelnuts. I've got apples which I've managed to get from the supermarket very cheaply. Apple trees for five or six pounds which I've planted a few of those. Others I've rescued from people's patios when they're throwing out the, the old plants and don't want them anymore uh, or they're moving etc. I've uh, planted those out and they've taken quite well. Uh, there's lots and lots of different ways of, of getting these trees and I've got a few examples of, of them here. The other things that I'm exploring are uh, soft fruits, so raspberry canes, uh, black currants, Blueberries, gooseberries, uh, thornless black currants, Japanese vineberries, all of these things can be grown in containers or in small areas or um, sort of trained against walls and things. They don't have to be in the middle of an allotment or a garden. Uh, so I've got a few examples of those, some of which have only recently been planted, some which are a lot older. Now, one thing in this series of videos is that these subjects can be rather large. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a condensed small amount of uh, ideas that we can try and I'm going to put links in the videos to how to's to make the, the things that I'm making. So for instance I've got homemade cider homemade cider vinegar and I'll put a link in the description below on how to make cider with no chemicals just apples and how to make the cider vinegar. Now the cider vinegar is basically the cider but when you ferment it you leave the top open like this. This is the apple cider vinegar this white stuff on the top is the yeast now you put it in a jar or in a container I like to put it in things that I can see what's going on and you just put a cloth 
on the top so there's no lid on here and that's just lets the air go in but no insects or dust uh, you don't even have to tie them on as long as you've just got it covered so nothing can go in the top let it breathe the air it'll produce this white layer on the top which is what converts the apple juice into cider vinegar and then you allow it to ferment with a different system on if you can get some live vinegar and put it in it starts the process quicker but I'm not going to go into details of those here there will be a link in the description the other things are beans that I've grown peas that I've grown and collect, collected the seeds and dried them there are um, there will be a video at some point in how to dry the seeds it's very simple you just put them in somewhere that they're not going to get damp keep them warm but not hot we've got sunflowers and how they're um, done hazelnuts they're collected from my hazel trees and they will be they're a crop and they are also able to be used to plant more one little thing that I'm going to show you here is garlic now we can get a garlic bulb and we can get these from farm shops local growers and inside of these bulbs are lots of little cloves so when we break them open we have the cloves now to grow more garlic all you need to do is plant these cloves upright this way up about an inch below the surface in a pot or a little corner of the garden and it's best to do it in the winter time so they can get a frost before they start growing but that will produce a bulb so in here I have the little potatoes that were grown last year um, they've just been stored in a cool dry place over winter and they're perfectly edible now but these will get planted and become the new potato crop this summer so just place one of these in a bucket or in the ground in a depth of three or four inches and just water it in and wait for it to grow once it's finished growing it'll flower the flowers will then die the plants will die off and you're ready to harvest potatoes so you should get sort of ten times as much potato out as you put in so if every one of us planted one potato 60 million potatoes planted that's an awful lot of tonnage of potatoes that don't need to be imported uh, various seeds that can be gathered from the fruit and nut trees and plants that I've grown so we've got sunflower seeds these are from a sunflower and each one of these seeds will produce another sunflower if planted um, beans these will all each produce a bean and we've got the garlic which we've discussed we've got chilies these are ones that I grew a couple of years ago now and they're easy to store once you've dried them out uh, each one of these contains several seeds and each one could produce another chili plant they'll grow on a windowsill or in a, a warm space we have peas these these were grown in the garden here and then harvested and dried and each one of these will produce another pea plant so between us if each of us try one of these things then if we can encourage every household in the country to grow a plant or a tree then that's 60 million plants or trees which is an enormous difference to how things are shipped around the world and how they're grown okay let's go and view some of the plants then shall we so here we are out in the vegetable beds and this is the garlic so far it was planted from the cloves it's looking healthy growing quite well um, and we'll see what happens later on in the summer 
But this is just the cloves that were from the farm down the road that sell them, sell the clothes, sell the whole bulbs in a whole form. I bought four bulbs, split them up into cloves, and just planted them an inch into the ground. And here we are. So these are the sweet chestnut. Well, they will be trees that have been grown from 99 pence bare root uh, saplings, seedlings, whatever, um, from eBay, I think these were from. And they've done rather well, about five foot tall now, four or five foot tall. One of the ones that haven't been eaten by the deer. The deer have munched a couple of them. Okay, so this is a walnut tree planted from a walnut. It's been in the ground for a few years now. About five years, I think, four or five years. But it's grown quite nicely. And hopefully in a few years I might get a fruit back. One of the cheap supermarket apples planted last year. It's survived the winter well. It's um, looking healthy. The thing is, they're only sort of five or six pounds each, and in a year or two, they'll be producing that amount each year worth of apples, and soon exceeding it. So, a good investment if you have a small place to put one. They can be grown in pots, even. This is a bay tree which came in a little tiny pot as a gift, and I've planted it out to allow it to grow. So, great for cooking with. And we have golden oregano which is nice in foods, nice dried as well as a seasoning. It goes especially well on chips. Well, I hope you enjoyed a little tour around the fruit and nut trees and the vegetable plots. Um, if you're subscribed um, thank you very much and uh, if you click the little bell symbol next to the subscribe button that will give you an alert to let you know when the next video is coming and to those that have enjoyed the video please click the like it helps get it out there uh, subscribe if you're enjoying the idea of us all working together to make the difference um, so in conclusion, basically, if we all plant one thing this year, then collectively, that's an enormous amount of, of good quality food, which we don't have to have produced by the, the big factory farms. We can produce it ourselves. So hopefully you enjoyed and feel that you can share this with everybody else. And happy planting for now. See you soon.